Donald Trump and J.D. Vance are trying to win the Democrat-leaning state of Minnesota. What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back again with a new video, and today... We have to talk about the 2024 presidential election because Donald Trump and J.D. Vance are in Minnesota today. And that's because the Trump campaign not only believes that Minnesota is much closer than it was back in 2020, but they believe they actually can flip the state. Now, if this was two to three months ago, hell, even two to three weeks ago, I would have said this made sense because the recent polling before Biden dropped out was bad. And I'm not talking about, oh, a one to two point shift since 2020. No, we're talking about the state was within the margin of error. Hell, with how Democrats were acting based on the Eternals, there were reports out there that had New Mexico, New Jersey, Colorado, possibly flipping. And at that point in time, Minnesota and Virginia, they would flip way before those other states. So two to three weeks ago, I think it would have made sense to do a rally. I really think it would have made sense then, when Biden was still on the ballot, when he was still running. But ever since Biden dropped out, it changed my perspective of the race for now. I know, I know. That sounds like I'm dooming. It sounds like I'm glooming. I'm not. Far from it, in fact. I think just for now, targeting Minnesota, Virginia, New Mexico, at this point in time, is not a good idea because we're not going against Biden anymore. We're going against Harris. And I understand that she has some awful numbers, especially before she entered the race. She had some terrible numbers. Like we're talking about historically bad numbers for a vice president. But at this point in time, Harris is experiencing a pulling bump. Now, like I've said hundreds of times the past week or so, this pulling bump, more than likely, like, hear what I'm saying, more than likely, is going to last two to three weeks. Could it last longer? Maybe. And even then, it's not that big of a surge, in quotation, surge. Harris plus one in Arizona. Harris plus two in Georgia. Harris plus one in Pennsylvania. But even with this shift towards Harris, which it's, it's there, it's very small, but it's there, Trump is still winning, according to the decision desk. And I know it's only one polling average, I get it, but they're not a far-right outlet. These guys are very good at their job. They're bipartisan, they're not hacks. So if they are showing virtually no shift towards Harris, you would have to agree with them. Now, RCP is showing a shift towards Harris. Again, it's not that big of a shift, but it's still a shift. It's a couple points at most, but either way. I have one big concern that some people I think are kind of believe it's going to happen, which I don't think is going to, but there is a possibility that with all the artificial quote unquote momentum Harris has, notice how I said that momentum in quotation, this is not momentum. This is not natural. It's artificial BS being pushed by the media, by the left, because they're, they're so scared of Trump winning that they are begging people at this point to support Harris. That's what's happening. You think I'm kidding? Look at the media coverage the past week or so. They have been gaslighting everything. They're saying, Harris was never the border czar. You know, Harris is the greatest person ever. Hell, you had like Newsweek, I think, saying, uh, Donald Trump, uh, he didn't get shot, actually. Which, by the way, that should be a lawsuit. According to these same people, that should be a $1.5 billion lawsuit by Trump th th to allege that. They did the same thing to Alex Jones. But either way, the point is, the media gaslighting the past week or so has been insane. And with that gaslighting and a lot of Democrats coping and deluding themselves into thinking, oh, Harris is such a great candidate, Harris did go up slightly. Her favorabilities went up 20%, which should tell you everything. Like, you, you don't see that kind of bump it, outside of, like, George Bush after 9-11. You need that type of crisis to cause that type of bump, not just what the media is doing right now. It's not healthy, it's not sustainable, but either way, Harris has momentum. The thing with this momentum is if you kill it now, 
it's going to get ugly for Democrats real quick. And I don't think they're realizing they have a big problem here. Because think about it. If their momentum dies right away, they're screwed. Because they were banking on the idea of, well, we're going to have momentum for three to four months. Which, I don't think that's even possible. You didn't even get that with Obama 2008. Yeah, he had momentum for like two to three months, but that was two to three months, not three to four months, like we're talking about with Harris. And by the way, she's a far weaker candidate than Obama. So, their momentum is is more than likely going to last, like, what, two to three weeks? And if the Trump campaign plays this right, they're going to crash and burn. And that's why I'm saying, don't talk about Minnesota, don't talk about Virginia, New Jersey, New Mexico, wherever, like these other Democrat states, for the next month. Because if you target Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, you know, the states that actually matter, the states that if you win, you're going to win the presidency. Well, if you target these states, win all of them, A, you got the presidency locked down, and B, you could then start talking about Minnesota, Virginia, New Jersey, New Mexico even. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying that... Minnesota's gone for Democrats. I just think for now, the Trump campaign, they have to wait and see. Because if we invest in the Minnesota right now, and if somehow the Harris campaign gains momentum and keeps it going for four months, well, you just wasted a bunch of time and resources into a state that you're not going to win. Nor are you going to even need to win. You don't need Minnesota to win the presidency. Because if you win Minnesota... You're already winning Wisconsin. You're already winning a state like Michigan. You're winning Arizona, Nevada, Georgia. You don't need Minnesota. You need Georgia. You need Pennsylvania. You need Wisconsin. That's what I'm trying to tell people. Again, I I understand the idea of expanding the map. Because you want as many pathways to victory as possible. The problem is... We have a completely different race than before, at least for now. There's a good chance this could not only be the same race for Democrats, but become even worse because Harris has a bunch of problems that a lot of Democrats refuse to admit. They were saying it for years, how she's unlikable. Her policies are insane. They're extreme. She appeals to no one. Like, seriously, who does she appeal to? Maybe the... Partisan Democrats in California, in parts of New York, parts of Massachusetts. But what about the white working class voter in Wisconsin, in Pennsylvania? She has no appeal in these to these voters in these states. Which you could argue, well, what about Minnesota? She has no appeal to the voters in, you know, Duluth, for example. I really believe that, by the way. Like, places like Duluth, Minnesota... I think it's going to be very close. I don't think Trump's going to flip it. It, He might. But the thing about Minnesota is if Trump wins Duluth, it's probably not enough because you have to worry about Minneapolis. Now, for a while there, it was getting pretty bad for Democrats. And this was the main reason why I thought for a while that it was going to be a very close race here. Not that Trump was going to flip the state, but it was going to be super duper close. Hennepin County was becoming bad news for Biden real quick because of what's happening in Israel. The voters of Minneapolis County hate Biden's guts. They think they got screwed for voting for the guy because of what's happening in Israel. That's a fact. Look at the primary. I think it was like 45% uncommitted. It was crazy. Minneapolis is where Democrats win or lose Minnesota. Look at this. Hennepin County 200 or 330,000 vote victory. Biden won statewide by 230,000 votes. And that doesn't even include Ramsey County. Look at this. 140,000 vote win for Biden. These two counties are the reason Democrats win Minnesota every single year. But at the same time, These two counties, you could argue, were the reason that Biden was struggling horrifically here. Like, we're we're talking about he was collapsing. He was doing, like, 20 points worse in some polls. It was bad. Not because they were all voting for Trump. Some of them were. 
a lot of them were saying, we're just not going to vote. We're going to stay home. We're going to vote for Jill Stein, vote for, you know, Cornell West, whoever. And that's why Minnesota was looking a lot closer than it was back in 2020. The thing with Harris, and we got to see what happens, but at least for now, I think she kind of, you know, calms down the progressive base, the Muslim vote, those voters. I think she does calm them down a little bit because she's different. Some people are going to think, well, since she's not Biden, she could be better. She could be 10 times better. She could actually stop the war in Israel and all of that. The problem for Harris and Democrats is she's doing the same thing Biden did early on with the war in Israel. She's trying to play both sides. This doesn't work. You cannot play both sides on an issue like this. It, it has never worked, let alone on the issue of the, the, the war in Israel. That especially pisses off everyone. And Kamala Harris, you hear what she's saying. It's like, wait a minute. This is the same thing Biden did, and it pissed off everyone. So, for now, I think Kamala Harris is kind of, you know, chilling out the Democrat base. Like, okay, it's somewhat different. We got rid of Biden, thank God. But they might realize real quickly, oh, wait a minute. She might be a bigger disaster than Biden was. It, that could very well happen. I, I'm not saying it's a guarantee that will happen, but... I think there's a legitimate possibility a bunch of voters realize, yeah, she's even worse. She's the same thing as Biden, if not even more incompetent. Because at least you could say with Biden, well, at the bare minimum, you could say he's old. With Harris, it's like, wait, she's 59 and she doesn't know where she is. She says dumb stuff all the time. It's like, really? That's why I'm saying wait and see. Let Harris say some stupid stuff. Now, I'm not saying go off the air completely with ads and stuff. I'm just saying don't invest everything. Test the waters in Minnesota. First target Wisconsin, target Michigan. And if it's going very well there, then do Minnesota. Then expand to Virginia. Expand to even New Mexico if it gets that bad. But we got to see what happens. I still have the feeling that this is going to end horribly for Democrats. I don't know how or what's going to cause that, but Harris has a lot of problems. And if the Trump campaign plays this right, it could get ugly for Democrats real quick. And they might regret getting rid of her, which would be hilarious or get rid of Biden. But we just got to see what happens. I still think the rally right now kind of wastes of time. I would have done the rally if you did one in Duluth, in Rochester, you know, close to the border in Wisconsin. I think they did one in, I think it was Benton County or Stearns. I can't remember where they did the rally in. It's not in Minneapolis, just north of it. We just got to see how the polls look in Minnesota. But right now, they do have a Harris Plus, like, 8, I believe it was. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Godspeed to all of you.